Chapter 1. The Escape The acrid smell of smoke and the deafening roar of explosions filled the air as Captain Lena Riker sprinted towards the last evacuation ship. Her heart pounded in her chest, and her lungs burned with every breath. Around her, the once proud buildings of Earth's capital city crumbled, reduced to rubble by the relentless assault of the Zarkog. Captain Riker, over here, a voice called out. Lena turned to see her second-in-command, Lieutenant Marcus Evans, waving frantically from the entrance of the ship. Lena quickened her pace, dodging falling debris and leaping over smoldering craters. As she reached the ship, Marcus grabbed her arm and pulled her inside. We need to go now, Marcus shouted over the cacophony of alarms and shouts. Lena nodded, her eyes scanning the interior of the ship. Hundreds of frightened faces stared back at her the last remnants of humanity packed tightly into the cramped space. Is this everyone? Lena asked, her voice hoarse. Marcus shook his head grimly. There are still people out there, but we can't wait any longer. The Zarkog are closing in. Lena closed her eyes for a moment, her heart heavy with the weight of the decision she had to make. She knew that leaving people behind was a death sentence, but staying would doom them all. Prepare for takeoff she ordered, her voice steady despite the turmoil raging inside her. As the ship's engines roared to life, Lena made her way to the bridge. She strapped herself into the command chair, her hands gripping the controls tightly. All systems go, Marcus reported from his station beside her. But Captain, the Zarkog have locked onto our position. They're firing. Lena's eyes widened as a barrage of energy beams slammed into the ship's shields, sending shudders through the hull. Evasive maneuvers, Lena barked, her fingers flying over the controls. The ship lurched to the side, narrowly avoiding another volley of enemy fire. Shields at 60%, Marcus called out, his face pale. We can't take much more of this. Lena gritted her teeth, her mind racing. She knew that the Zarkog wouldn't give up easily, not when they were so close to wiping out the last of humanity. Divert all power to the engines, she ordered. We need to break through their blockade. As the ship surged forward, Lena held her breath. The Zarkog ships loomed ahead of them, their weapons glowing menacingly. Come on, come on, she muttered under her breath, her knuckles white from gripping the controls. Suddenly, a brilliant flash of light erupted from the ship's forward cannons, tearing through the enemy lines. The Zarkog ship scattered, caught off guard by the unexpected attack. We're through, Marcus shouted, his voice filled with a mix of relief and disbelief. Lena let out a shaky breath, her heart still racing. She knew that this was only the beginning of their journey, and that the hardships they would face would test them all to their limits. As the ship hurtled through space, Lena couldn't help but feel a sense of overwhelming responsibility. The lives of everyone on board depended on her, and she knew that she would have to be stronger than she had ever been before to keep them safe. What's our destination? she asked, turning to Marcus. Kepler 452b, he replied, his eyes fixed on the nav screen. It's our best chance for survival. Lena nodded, her jaw set with determination. She knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, but she was ready to face whatever challenges lay in store. For the sake of her crew and for the future of humanity, she would not fail. Chapter 2 The Journey The stars streaked past the view screen as the evacuation ship hurtled through the void of space. In the days since their narrow escape from Earth, Captain Lena Riker had barely slept, her mind consumed with the weight of her responsibilities. Captain, you need to rest, Marcus said, his voice gentle but firm. You can't keep going like this. Lena shook her head, her eyes fixed on the endless expanse of space before her. I can't rest, not when so much depends on us. You're no good to anyone if you're exhausted, Marcus countered. The crew needs you at your best. Lena sighed, rubbing her eyes. She knew Marcus was right, but the thought of sleeping while her people were in danger 
felt like a luxury she couldn't afford. I'll rest later, she said, her tone leaving no room for argument. What's our status? Marcus hesitated for a moment before replying. We're making good time, but our supplies are running low. We need to find a way to restock soon. Lena frowned, her mind already racing with possibilities. What about that signal we picked up yesterday? Could it lead us to a resupply point? It's possible, Marcus said, his brow furrowed. But we don't know what we're walking into. It could be a trap. We don't have a choice, Lena said, her voice grim. We need those supplies. As the ship changed course to follow the signal, Lena couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. She scanned the radar, looking for any sign of the Zarkog. But the screens remained clear. Do you think they're still out there? She asked, glancing at Marcus. I'd be surprised if they weren't, he replied, his face serious. They won't stop until they've wiped us out completely. Lena nodded, her jaw clenched. She knew that the Zarkog would never give up, not after the destruction they had wrought on Earth. She could still see the faces of the people they had left behind, the ones she hadn't been able to save. I failed them she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. Marcus turned to her, his eyes fierce. You didn't fail anyone, Captain. You made the only choice you could. Lena shook her head, her eyes stinging with unshed tears. I should have done more. I should have found a way to save everyone. You can't save everyone, Marcus said, his voice gentle but you can save the ones on this ship. That's what matters now. Lena took a deep breath, trying to center herself. She knew Marcus was right, but the guilt and the fear still gnawed at her. As the ship drew closer to the source of the signal, Lena felt a growing sense of unease. Something didn't feel right, but she couldn't put her finger on what it was. Suddenly, the ship shuddered, throwing them all off balance. Alarms blared, and red lights flashed on the console. Report! Lena barked, her heart pounding. We've been hit by some kind of energy pulse, Marcus shouted over the noise. Shields are down to 20%. Lena's eyes widened in horror as a massive ship emerged from the darkness, its hull bristling with weapons. It's the Zarkog, she whispered, her blood running cold. As the enemy ship bore down on them, Lena knew that they were in for the fight of their lives. But she also knew that she would do whatever it took to protect her crew and ensure their survival. With a deep breath, she squared her shoulders and faced the view screen, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 3. The Discovery The evacuation ship shuddered as another energy pulse slammed into its weakened shields. Captain Lena Riker gripped the armrests of her chair, her knuckles white with tension. Evasive maneuvers, she shouted, her voice barely audible over the blaring alarms. Divert all power to the engines. Lieutenant Marcus Evans worked frantically at his console, his fingers flying over the controls. Captain, the Zarkog ship is gaining on us. We can't outrun them. Lena gritted her teeth, her mind racing. They had come too far to be captured now, but their options were running out. Suddenly, a strange reading on the scanner caught her eye. Marcus, what's that? she asked, pointing to the blinking light. Marcus frowned, studying the readout. It looks like some kind of energy signature coming from a nearby planet. Lena's heart skipped a beat. Could this be the break they needed? Set a course for that planet, she ordered. It's our only chance. As the ship veered towards the unknown world, the Zarkog ship continued to close in. Lena watched the distance between them shrink on the radar, her heart pounding in her chest. Just as it seemed that the enemy would overtake them, the evacuation ship broke through the planet's atmosphere, plunging towards the surface below. Brace for impact! Lena yelled, gripping the armrests tightly. The ship hit the ground hard, skidding across the rocky terrain before coming to a shuddering stop. For a moment, everything was silent, 
save for the hiss of escaping air and the crackle of sparks. Is everyone all right? Lena asked, her voice hoarse. A chorus of affirmative replies echoed through the ship, and Lena let out a sigh of relief. They had made it, but for how long? As the crew began to assess the damage to the ship, Lena and Marcus stepped outside to survey their surroundings. The planet was unlike anything they had ever seen before, with towering mountains and vast, technicolor forests stretching out as far as the eye could see. What is this place? Marcus wondered aloud, his eyes wide with awe. Lena shook her head, equally amazed. I don't know, but we need to find out. If there's something here that can help us, we need to find it. As they explored the strange new world, Lena couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig set her nerves on edge. Suddenly, Marcus stopped short, his eyes fixed on something in the distance. Captain, look, he exclaimed, pointing to a glint of metal on the horizon. Lena followed his gaze, her heart racing. As they drew closer, the shape resolved into a massive, ancient-looking structure, its walls covered in intricate carvings and glowing with an eerie light. What is it? Marcus breathed, his voice filled with wonder. I don't know, Lena replied, her eyes narrowed. But something tells me it's important. As they approached the structure, Lena felt a strange sensation wash over her, like a whisper in the back of her mind. She shook her head, trying to clear it, but the feeling only grew stronger. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the air, seeming to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. Welcome, travelers, it said, its tone deep and resonant. You have come far, but your journey is only beginning. Lena and Marcus exchanged a glance, their eyes wide with fear and wonder. Whatever lay ahead, they knew that it would test them in ways they had never been tested before. But Lena also knew that they had no choice but to press on. The fate of humanity rested on their shoulders, and she would not let them down. With a deep breath, she stepped forward, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 4 The Revelation As Lena and Marcus stepped into the ancient structure, a sense of unease washed over them. The air was thick with a strange energy, and the walls seemed to pulse with an otherworldly light. I don't like this, Marcus muttered, his hand resting on his sidearm. Something doesn't feel right. Lena nodded, her own hand hovering near her weapon. Stay sharp, she warned. We don't know what we're dealing with here. As they made their way deeper into the structure, the carvings on the walls became more intricate depicting scenes of a great battle between two powerful races. Lena studied the images, her brow furrowed in concentration. I think I know what this is, she said slowly, tracing her fingers over the ancient script. It's a story of a war, a conflict that happened long ago. Marcus leaned in closer, squinting at the carvings. Between who? he asked. Lena shook her head, a sense of dread growing in the pit of her stomach. Between the Zarkog and another race, one that looks strangely familiar. As they rounded a corner, they found themselves in a vast chamber, its walls lined with glowing panels and pulsing machinery. In the center of the room stood a towering figure, its form obscured by a shimmering energy field. Welcome, Captain Riker, the figure said its voice echoing through the chamber. I have been waiting for you. Lena's eyes widened in shock. How do you know my name? She demanded, her hand tightening on her weapon. The figure chuckled, a sound that sent shivers down Lena's spine. I know many things, Captain. I've been watching you and your kind for a long time. As the energy field dissipated, Lena gasped in recognition. The figure before them was unmistakably human, but its features were twisted and distorted, as if warped by some unseen force. Who are you? Marcus asked, his voice shaking slightly. The figure smiled, a cruel, twisted expression. 
I am the last of the Protheans, the race that once ruled this galaxy, and you, Captain Riker, are the key to my revenge. Lena's mind raced, trying to make sense of the figure's words. Revenge? Against who? The Protheans' smile widened. Against the Zarkog, of course. They destroyed my people, wiped us out like vermin. But with your help, I can finally have my vengeance. Lena shook her head, a sense of horror washing over her. I won't help you, she said firmly. I won't be a part of more death and destruction. The Protheans' eyes flashed with anger. You don't have a choice, Captain. The Zarkog are coming, and they will stop at nothing to destroy you and your people. Only by working with me can you hope to survive. Lena hesitated, torn between her desire to protect her crew and her revulsion at the thought of allying with such a twisted being. What do you want from me? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The Prothean smile returned, a predatory gleam in its eyes. I want you to lead your people to war, Captain. I want you to become the weapon that will destroy the Zarkog once and for all. Lena's heart raced, her mind spinning with the implications of the Prothean's words. She knew that she had a choice to make, one that could determine the fate of not just her crew, but the entire human race. As she stood there, facing the twisted remnant of a long-dead race, Lena knew that she had to be strong. She had to find a way to protect her people, no matter the cost. With a deep breath, she squared her shoulders and met the Prothean's gaze head-on. Tell me what I need to do, she said, her voice steady and determined. The Prothean's smile widened, a glint of triumph in its eyes. Excellent, it purred. Let us begin. Chaturamal, the confrontation. Lena stood on the bridge of the evacuation ship, her eyes fixed on the view screen before her. The Prothean's words echoed in her mind, a constant reminder of the task that lay ahead. Captain, we're picking up a signal, Marcus said, his voice tense. It's the Zarkog. They've found us. Lena nodded, her jaw clenched tight. How long until they arrive? Ten minutes, maybe less, Marcus replied, his fingers flying over the console. Lena took a deep breath, trying to calm the pounding of her heart. She knew that this was the moment she had been dreading, the moment when she would have to face the Zarkog and decide the fate of her people. Prepare for battle, she ordered, her voice steady and clear. We're going to give them everything we've got. As the crew scrambled to ready the ship's weapons, Lena felt a presence behind her. She turned to see the Prothean standing there, its eyes glinting with anticipation. Are you ready, Captain? It asked, its voice a low purr. Lena hesitated, doubt gnawing at her mind. I don't know if I can do this, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. What if I make the wrong choice? The Prothean smiled, a cold, calculating expression. You have no choice, Captain. The Zarkog will destroy you and your people if you do not fight. Only through war can you hope to survive. Lena shook her head, a sense of despair washing over her. But at what cost? she asked, her voice cracking with emotion. How many more lives will be lost in this endless cycle of violence? The Prothean's smile faded, replaced by a look of cold determination. The cost is irrelevant, it said, its voice hard and unyielding. All that matters is victory. You must be willing to sacrifice everything to achieve it. Lena stared at the Prothean, a sense of revulsion washing over her. She knew that she could not become like this twisted being, consumed by hatred and the desire for revenge. No, she said firmly, her voice ringing with conviction. I won't be like you. I won't let revenge consume me. The Prothean's eyes flashed with anger, but before it could respond, the ship shuddered violently. Captain, they're here, Marcus shouted, his voice filled with fear. Lena turned back to the view screen, her heart pounding in her chest. The Zarkog ship loomed before them, its weapons already firing. Evasive maneuvers, 
Lena barked, gripping the armrests of her chair tightly. Return fire! The evacuation ship shuddered as its weapons discharged, the blasts slamming into the Zarkog ship's shields. For a moment, it seemed as though they might have a chance, but then the enemy ship's weapons found their mark, and the evacuation ship rocked with the impact. Shields are down to 20%, Marcus cried, his face pale with fear. Lena gritted her teeth, her mind racing. She knew that they could not win this battle through force alone. They needed something more, something that the Zarkog would not expect. Suddenly, an idea flashed through her mind, a desperate gamble that just might work. Marcus, open a channel to the Zarkog ship, she ordered, her voice steady. Marcus looked at her in surprise, but did as he was told. Channel open, Captain. Lena took a deep breath, then spoke. This is Captain Lena Riker of the evacuation ship. We surrender. For a moment, there was silence on the bridge as the crew stared at Lena in shock. Then the Prothean spoke, its voice filled with rage. What are you doing, Captain? You cannot surrender to the Zarkog. Lena ignored the Prothean, her eyes fixed on the viewscreen. We are willing to negotiate terms, she continued, her voice calm and measured. But we will not be destroyed. We will not become like you. There was a long pause, and then a voice crackled over the speakers. This is Commander Zoth of the Zarkog. We accept your surrender, Captain Riker. Prepare to be boarded. Lena let out a breath she hadn't realized she had been holding. She knew that the real battle was just beginning, but for now, they had bought themselves some time. As the Zarkog ship drew closer, Lena turned to face her crew. We're not giving up, she said, her voice filled with determination. We're going to find a way to end this war once and for all, but we're going to do it on our terms, not theirs. The crew nodded, their faces set with resolve. They knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but they also knew that they had a leader who would stop at nothing to protect them. As Lena turned back to face the view screen, she felt a sense of calm wash over her. She knew that she had made the right choice, even if it meant facing an uncertain future. But she also knew that she was not alone. She had her crew, her friends, and the strength of her own convictions to guide her. And with that knowledge, she was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, no matter how difficult they might be. Chapter 6. A New Beginning The evacuation ship sat in the hangar bay of the Zarkog vessel, surrounded by armed guards. Captain Lena Riker stood at the airlock, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and determination. Are you sure about this, Captain? Marcus asked, his voice low and tense. We're walking straight into the lion's den. Lena nodded, her jaw set. We don't have a choice, Marcus. If we want to end this war, we have to take a chance. As the airlock hissed open, Lena and Marcus stepped out onto the Zarkog ship, their hands raised in a gesture of surrender. A group of Zarkog soldiers approached them, their weapons trained on the humans. Follow me, one of the soldiers barked, gesturing with his gun. Lena and Marcus exchanged a glance, then fell into step behind the soldier. They were led through a maze of corridors, past groups of Zarkog, who stared at them with a mixture of curiosity and hostility. Finally, they arrived at a large chamber where a group of Zarkog officers were waiting for them. At their head was Commander Zoth, his eyes glinting with a predatory light. Captain Riker, he said, his voice a low growl. I must admit, I am surprised by your surrender. I did not think humans had it in them to admit defeat. Lena met his gaze steadily, refusing to be intimidated. We haven't admitted defeat, Commander. We've come to negotiate an end to this war. Zoth laughed, a harsh grating sound. Negotiate? With humans? You must be joking. Lena shook her head, her voice calm and measured. I'm not joking, Commander. I'm offering you a chance to end this conflict peacefully before more lives are lost on both sides. Zoth's eyes narrowed, and for a moment, Lena thought he might order his soldiers to open fire. 
But then, he spoke again, his voice thoughtful. And what would you propose, Captain? Lena took a deep breath, then began to speak. She told the Tsar Kog of the Prothean, of its twisted desire for revenge and the cycle of violence it had perpetuated. She spoke of the need for understanding, for cooperation between their two races. We don't have to be enemies, she said, her voice ringing with conviction. We can work together, build a future where both our peoples can thrive. For a long moment there was silence in the chamber. Then Zoth spoke, his voice grudging. You speak well, Captain, but how can we trust you after all that has happened? Lena met his gaze, her eyes blazing with determination. Because I'm willing to put my life on the line to make this happen. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to end this war once and for all. Zoth stared at her, his expression unreadable. Then, slowly, he nodded. Very well, Captain. We will listen to your proposal. Over the next few hours, Lena and the Zarkog officers worked to hammer out the details of a peace treaty. It was a tense, difficult process, with both sides making concessions and compromises. But in the end, they emerged with an agreement, one that would see an end to the hostilities between their two races and the beginning of a new era of cooperation. As Lena and Marcus prepared to leave the Zarkog ship, Zoth approached them, his expression solemn. You have done a great thing today, Captain, he said, his voice filled with grudging respect. You have shown courage and wisdom beyond your years. Lena smiled, feeling a sense of hope and pride welling up inside her. Thank you, Commander, but this is only the beginning. We have a lot of work ahead of us to build a lasting peace between our peoples. Zoth nodded, his eyes glinting with a new understanding. Indeed we do, Captain. Indeed we do. As Lena and Marcus boarded the evacuation ship, they were greeted by the cheers and applause of their crew. They had done the impossible, had found a way to end the war and secure a future for their people. But Lena knew that the real work was just beginning. She had grown so much over the course of their journey, had learned to be a leader, a diplomat, and a peacemaker. And now, as they set course for their new home, she knew that she was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, armed with the strength and wisdom she had gained. For the first time in a long time, Lena felt a sense of hope and optimism, a belief that anything was possible if they worked together. And with that knowledge, she led her people forward into a bright and promising future.